Good morning, everyone. Welcome to, gosh, I don't even really think I remember what week it is. I think we're on week four of our summer reading. So we are on our second half of our whole summer program. It is crazy how fast it's going, but I hope that you guys are having just as much fun as I am. And today we're taking a trip to the desert. What kind of animals live in the desert? There's camels, lots of reptiles, snakes and lizards and different kinds of turtles and tortoises um, because it's hot there and a lot of those animals live the best in those type of, that's right, there's our big word, habitat. There's all sorts of stuff. So we're gonna do a little exploring, but today we're gonna read about a camel. So let's get started. And I'm gonna apologize because I have allergies and I know <coughs> that I'm gonna sneeze today. Hopefully that's my only one. Although I love our flowers and our grass and things like that. They make Mrs. B's eyes itch and I sneeze. So I apologize ahead of time if I shake the camera and sneeze some more. Hopefully that'll be the only one, but they normally come in pairs. It says, How the Camel Got His Hump. And this book is written by Christine J. Jones, or I'm sorry, C. Jones. It was a hot desert under the hot sun Horse, dog, and ox slaved away. While they worked, Camel strutted around lazily. All he ever said was, Hump! On Monday, Horse trotted over to Camel. Camel, come run with us, said Horse. Hump! said Camel. Excuse my sniffles now since I sneezed. On Tuesday, Dog ran over to Camel. Camel, come fetch with us, barked Dog. But Camel just humphed. On Wednesday, Ox stomped over to Camel. Camel, come plow with us, moaned Ox. Humph, said Camel. On Thursday, Horse Dog and Ox told their owner about Camel. I'm sorry. But there's nothing I can do. You three will have to work harder to make up for Camel, said the owner. On Friday, horse, dog, and ox met with the magic desert watcher. Camel strolled by laughing. Humph, he said with a smile. You see, there's no hump yet. Magic desert watcher, camel won't work. All he says is hump. We don't, we do everything. It's not fair, they cried. It's not fair, he said. I will take care of it. What do you think he's gonna do? On Saturday, the Magic Desert Watcher found Camel. Camel, I hear you won't do any work. Hump, said Camel. I figure you would say that. I wouldn't say it again if I were you. You never know what could happen, said the Magic Desert Watcher. Hump, said Camel.
That does it, yelled the magic desert watcher. He twirled, yelled, and placed a spell on Camel. A large hump started to grow on Camel's back. What's going on? asked Camel. You have brought that hump upon yourself by not working, said the magic desert watcher. Now, are you going to work? How can I work with this giant hump? asked Camel. Your hump will help you work. It stores food and water. You can work without stopping, explained the Magic Desert Watcher. On Sunday, Camel joined horse, dog, and ox in the desert to work. None of the animals said a word about Camel's hump. Although Camel still didn't behave... He now does his share of the work, and that's how a camel got his hump. The end. <laughs> Do you think that's really how camels got their humps? No, I don't think so either. But even though our story is fake, which is what word? Fiction. Remember, fiction is fake. There is some true things in our book, though. All of those animals do live in the desert. The other thing is, is about the camel's hump. Our magic desert watcher did say that the camel's hump stores water and food, which is actually true. That is part of the camel's body and how it's made up and why it's able to walk so long in the desert and do all the things that it does because it has a way of storing up certain things. Pretty cool, huh? So today we are going to make camel masks. So go ahead and take your papers out of your kit and then you should also have two strings. Set those aside for now, we don't need them just yet. You'll need crayons or markers, whatever you wanna color with, and your um, scissors, but we don't need those yet. And we will need like a hole punch or, some, or you can use like the tip of your scissors, whatever works for you guys. So you can see, this is the already started coloring hairs. Now I cut out my circles ahead of time and I forgot and I apologize you guys. I was going to cut out your, your eyeball circles before, ahead of time for you before I put them in your kit. So that's, I apologize for that. You'll have to work a little harder with them because those are a little bit trickier to cut out since they're in the middle. But let's go ahead and color. I couldn't figure out what color I wanted to make my camel. So my camel's being all the colors. So I'm gonna finish coloring once you guys start coloring. Have, and while we're coloring, I wanna ask you guys a question. Have you guys ever been on a camel before? Now, I have. They had them at the circus when I was a little girl, but I've also been on them when I was older and such too. So a lot of times, and also from the zoo, I have been on a camel a couple of different times. Um, I've also rode on an elephant too at the at those kind of places. But that's kind of fun, huh? It's so weird how they walk because they're so their legs are so long. But it's pretty cool, huh? But if you've not if you haven't been on a camel before and you get the chance to, you guys should. It's not something that happens every day. Like around here, you know, we have horses around here. So you can get on a horse at any time, really. But to be on a camel is something definitely different and it's worth giving a try. All right, I'm gonna finish coloring mine up here. Now, I'm gonna finish coloring a lot quicker than you are because I started ahead of time, of course, so that way you didn't have to watch me color my whole camel. So you guys go ahead and color away and I'm just about already finished here. And I'm sorry, my coloring is actually probably shaking the camera. All right, so 
ta-da! There is my very bright and colorful camel. You guys go ahead and pause the video and finish coloring. All right, you guys are all ready to cut. So now what we're gonna do is we're going to cut out the edge of our camel. Now you are welcome if you really, really want to cut out nose and, but I just will definitely need to cut that part out. So that way when we put our masks on, we can see. What? So always remember scissor safety. We open and shut and we put the scissors facing away from us. So if you ever slip or things like that, it's gonna go away from you instead of going towards you so you don't accidentally cut yourself. Now I want you to cut out everything on your own, except of course you can get some help with the eyes because those are gonna be really tricky because they're on the inside. And again, I apologize for not for forgetting to cut out the eye circles before I put your guys' kits together. I'm so sorry. I'm gonna cut this piece off because it's a little bit big and get it out of the way. And you can do that too. Sometimes it's easier if you have smaller stuff to work with. All right, cut around. Also, wanted to give you guys a little heads up. Our butterflies are doing wonderful. They are all, the only sad news is, is we lost one of our butterflies over the weekend. I'm not sure why, they all looked fine, and Mrs. V, I always come in on the weekend to give them their food, because they have to have fresh sugar water every day, and I come in on the weekend to do it. I just come in and do just that. And I don't know why, but when I came in this morning, one of them wasn't, was dead on the ground, so I'm not sure why. So now we only have four butterflies, but that's okay. So I think probably in the next couple of days, I have, Mrs. V hasn't totally decided when exactly, but I think it's probably beginning pretty good idea to let them um, out soon and let them free out of their little their tiny habitat there so they can go into their big habitat. We have lots of flowers in bloom right now, so I think it's a good time because they'll have a lot of the nectar that they like to eat um, and such. So I think it'll be a really, really good time to let them go. I just don't want to do it on a rainy day because their wings, generally, they, they don't go flying in the rain because their wings are, they can't fly when their wings are wet. And then I also don't want to do it on a super windy, windy day because, well, they'll blow away and they'll have a hard time trying to, trying to fly. So in the next couple of days when we have a really nice day that's not rainy and is not super windy, which can kind of be hard around here because we have lots of days that are windy. Um, but if I find one of those days here shortly, I'm going to, um, we're going to let them let them free, but I will make sure that when I do that, that we completely and totally tape it or video it um, and put it out there so that way you guys can also see, um, hopefully see them kind of fly away a little bit. So, okay, so I have my mask cut out. And then what we need to do is you're going to need to either use your scissors or your, um, if you have a hole punch, or if you have scissors that have a little hole, you need to make a hole on each side. And I'm trying to decide. I have to kind of look at mine here for a second. Hold on. If I put it right in there, that'll kind of put them, okay. So we want to put them kind of right about here. Don't want to put too close to here because then the paper will get too thin and it'll rip. So kind of over here. So. Mrs. V is going to kind of just do hers a little. I'm going to do mine a little bit lower because my face is bigger than yours. So my holes need to go down a little bit just so that way they're kind of in the right spot. So just a little hole here. And if you don't have a hole punch at home, you can use whatever you need to. If you have a leather punch, put it on the smallest setting you know, and then you can make a hole as well. If you don't and you have some scissors that are a little bit more pointy at the end, you could just poke a hole through. Um, 
and stuff. If you need some help, make sure to grab mom, dad, grandma, grandpa, whoever's with you to help, help. So then you're gonna have your two strings, okay? And I did them this way, so what we're gonna do is you're gonna put your string through and just make a tiny little knot right here on the end. And just a tiny one. Nothing too fancy, but don't, make sure you don't pull too, too. I'm trying to do this so you guys can see, but it's kind of hard because my hands are bigger and you kind of get away. So just a little one. So we'll do it like that. We'll do it one more time. Now, you want to pull tight enough that you get it, you're not tied, but you don't want to pull so tight that you rip your paper. Because remember, this is just paper. Okay. And we'll see if Mrs. String, Mrs. V's, Mrs. V strings, Mrs. Strings, that's silly. If Mrs. V strings are long enough for her bigger head, it may not be, but we'll have to wait and see. I kind of just, I didn't measure mine very well. Okay. And let me do this again. So you gotta do both of them on both sides. Okay. Now, if you don't like this little flappy part in the front, you are welcome to take your scissors and trim it off. But make sure you don't trim it too close because then it'll just cut your knot. Mrs. V's making a pile of her garbage over here, so when we're all done, I can put it clean up my ass. Okay. So now you should have your camel mask. And then what you can do is you take it and put it around your head and then just have somebody help you if you need help. Some of you might be able to tie your shoes yet. If you could tie your shoes, you're gonna tie it just like if you were to tie your shoes. So that way you can pull the string on and off. If you can't do that yet, you just need to ask for some help. So you're gonna go and you're just gonna tie it around your head. So Mrs. V's gonna do that. See if I made my strings long enough. And I may or may not have my ponytail is kind of in the way at the moment, but we will see. Okay, might have to hold it on with one hand for one finger for a moment. I've got it. I am the rainbow camel. I would love to be able to see pictures of you guys in your camel masks. Aren't those silly? All right. Well, that was tons of fun, guys. Hopefully you had some fun too. Take some pictures in your camel masks. I'd love to see them. And we'll see you guys next time. Bye.